Good evening. So I'm Charlotte Clues, and I live in Blue Hill, um, where I teach yoga and Ayurveda um, for my business called Wild Open Heart. But tonight I want to tell you how I ended up standing next to Silvino Kimari, who's one of the world's best trail runners, ultra runners. Um, and my story starts out a lot like those cute little Olympian pamper ads. Um, I was super awkward and painfully uncoordinated as a kid, and I barely made it through the mud puddles. And then many years and many mud puddles later, I grew up in this strong, determined woman and like super painfully slow runner. So you might not believe me, but I guarantee over half of you guys walk faster than I run. So last, I swear, it's true, it's true. So last year I decided that I would make up for what I lack in speed by getting really good at distance. And I started running and scrambling uh, through Acadia National Park. I would do like two mountains, three mountains, five mountains a day. And then I would just start running up and back and forth over Cadillac Mountain, um, which is great because there's a water fountain at the top and a bathroom <laughs> and hot chocolate. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I wanted to do more remote trails, so I would require my husband-daughter resupply team to meet me on various summits with water and snacks. And sometimes I would stash a drop bag on the side of the road, like 15 or 20 miles into my run. You might have found them. I always left a little note that said, don't touch, please, this is my stuff. Like, some overly responsible park ranger. Come take anyway, so by Memorial Day, uh, my girls and I signed up for a barefoot 5K. So mostly I do run barefoot, um, and it was super fun, and it was really muddy. And the next day I ran my first 50K race, um, where I actually put shoes on because I had been starting to have this thing called top of the foot pain, which is a really typical problem for barefoot runners. Um, so the shoes end up really sucking, and they tear up my feet worse than than being barefoot, but I don't know, I still don't know what to do about that. So I, it's nothing a little super glue, glue can't fix, so I, I do glue my feet back together quite a lot. And I spent the summer in search of the perfect pair of shoes, which I have never really found, and um, by the time the Cranberry Island 50K came along, which by the way is a fantastic race, uh, it's not going to happen again, sorry about that, um, but <laughs> you can't come. But uh, I tried to run that race barefoot because I still really hadn't found shoes, but the pavement got super hot, it was like 85 degrees, and um, and it was really sticky, so I ended up putting shoes on. And this, I like this photo because it really kind of sums up what, what's great about ultra distance running, which is like goofy people having a good time. Um, so the thing is, I'm actually a much better triathlete than I am runner. Actually, I'm a better sashayer. Uh, <laughs> and my, <laughs> my husband and I, um, every year for the last five years, we've done this thing called the Granite Man Challenge, where we swim three miles from Long Island to Blue Hill, and then we bike 120 miles up to Millinocket, and then we hike to Todd, and that's super fun. And then at the end of September, I did, <laughs> and it's really fun. So <laughs> I did my first 50-mile race in Vermont, and that was really like my big goal for the year. That was pretty amazing. It was gorgeous. The trails were beautiful. I ran as fast as I could, and the time limit for that race is 12 hours. I finished in 12 hours and three minutes. I was the second to last person that counted. I was pretty psyched. I was having so much fun running. It's, like, it's amazing to be in that kind of shape, you guys. Like To be able to run the, mar the MDI marathon and have it be like easy, that's pretty cool. And, like a four-mile trail race, no problem, right? That's like before breakfast. and uh, I kind of ignored my foot. I had a little bit of foot pain. So I ended up in... in um, in November, going to this race called La Ruta Run, I had been invited to be the yoga teacher. This is in Costa Rica. And the race goes from the west coast in Jaco up uh, through the rainforest up to very close to San Jose in the Central Valley, so about uh, 12,000 feet of elevation gain. I joined 13 Tarumara Indians from Chihuahua, Mexico, and two Canadians and two North Americans. And this is supposed to be like a cultural exchange between minimalist runners and indigenous runners. And it was just the second year of the race. So we spent a week together hanging out in San Jose, drinking coffee and playing pool and riding on a bus. And these guys are from the Taramara, are from the Copper Canyon um, in, near Chihuahua, Mexico. They really are born to run. Like these guys, the ones who came, are pretty amazing natural athletes. And this is Silvino on the far right and the arm. She, he's the guy who I showed the picture of with my sandals in the beginning. He's like pretty much the most amazing trail runner I've ever seen. Um, so... We did, in fact, do some yoga. That's why I had been invited, was to be the yoga teacher. I was not invited to be, like, a, an amazing runner, okay? So, <laughs> but I did teach yoga. It was really fun. It was really silly. Um, they thought it was very funny. They couldn't balance on one foot. And they also were totally worried I was going to incapacitate them for their race, which was a reasonable concern, but um, they, were, they were good sports. So about 40 of us ended up running this race. Uh, most of them were from Mexico and Costa Rica, so they were 
fine with the 90 degrees and 90, 90% humidity. I was totally not. I'm from down East Maine. I was like dying. Um, and you can see there's other, there's like this other guy right next to me, that tall white guy. We were both pretty much done um, <laughs> by 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> so here, um, here's what they wore on their feet. Most of the men wear these harache sandals. And then um, they're just made out of um, like tire, rubber, literally tires, and then this uh, rubber thong that they... Um, leather thong. And then the women wear these plastic house shoes. And it totally doesn't slow her down. This is Maria Isadora. She's 36. Um, she's a goat herder. She has three kids. She's a one-year-old son. And she just left her family to come on this run. It's the first race she'd ever done. And she mostly, she doesn't run. She just like hikes up and down these canyons. She's in amazing shape. And she totally, she beat me by several hours. Uh, <laughs> so they also, um, they don't really eat goose and stuff. They have this panole, which is like ground up cornmeal and water. Uh, that's mostly what they had. They did eat like the cookies and stuff, and they don't have fancy waste packs. Like I spent all summer trying to work out like the perfect, you know, hydration system. And here he's got like the free water bottle we all got, and he's got it tied on, and it totally worked fine for them. So I ended up getting lost, and uh, <laughs> I went up like an extra two thousand feet, and, like way out of the way, and I didn't realize until I was at the top of a mountain, and there's this cowboy up there, and he's just like this old, you know, crinkled classic Costa Rican cowboy. He's just laughing. He's like, I don't know who you are, and I don't know what you're doing here. You are not, like, you are not supposed to be here. So I ended up, I ended up getting to the 52-kilometer finish line, and uh, that was cool. It was super fun. And the next day, um, my feet were so swollen, my toenails were literally popping off. And so Silvino, he rescued me by showing me how to wear harache sandals, and so I could, like, hobble around town. So it was five months ago. It was super fun, and... Um, and yeah, I'm totally still injured and it was totally worth it. So. <laughs>